the great thing for me in the University of Florida, NIL is going to be a strength here. So, you know, we've got our strategy and our plan, and we're excited about executing that going forward. You know, and we just happen to be at a place uh, that has tremendous history, tradition. NIL is no problem. It's a slam dunk at Florida, and we're going to, our players are going to benefit from that. And we're going to execute that and try to help our team and help the Gators win. College programs must be competitive in name, image, and likeness. It impacts current athletes and affects the decision of recruits. And Gator fans can put Florida at the forefront of name, image, and likeness. The Gator Collective is leading the charge, uniting fans and student athletes like never before. Commit for exclusive content, interactions, and events which bring you closer than ever to your favorite players. In this talent acquisition business, name, image, and likeness will play a huge role in Florida returning to the elite status of college football. It can start here. Join the Gator Collective. Link is in the description. Want more Gators Breakdown? Join Gators Breakdown Plus. Starting at $3 a month, get access to unique episodes, plus a blog, chat room, giveaways, shoutouts, and more. Gators Breakdown Plus is furthering the interaction with fans and listeners like you. Head to gatorsbreakdown.supportingcast.fm to join Gators Breakdown Plus today. Gators Breakdown, because there's never a dull moment in Gator Nation. The Gators Breakdown podcast is ready to go. I'm your host, David Waters. You can find me on Twitter, at GatorDave underscore SEC. And boy, what a big one we got right here. Not really a surprise. We kind of knew this one was leaning towards Florida, but... We had to see it happen, didn't we? And it did. Big-time elite wide receiver Aiden Mazzell chooses Florida over Alabama and Tennessee. Big, big, big big-time get for the Gators. We'll get into just how big it is for just what type of recruit he is, where he's ranked, what he brings to the field. This is an elite get for Florida. I think he'll start. I think he'll rise in the rankings too. We'll get into it where he's at right now, but I don't think he's done uh, rising here. So we we kind of we we knew this one was big going in. I think this were, there was a reason you can hear it in my voice. There's a reason we got excited on Twitter. There's a reason we got excited on Gators Breakdown Plus. This one's this one's big. This, this one's big, and we'll get into just how big right here. Before we do, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. A lot of you right now on YouTube. Do those things. It really helps us out. You're live with us. About 100 of you live right now. So thank you. I know Friday afternoon and all that. Didn't really know when I was going to go live with it. Uh, but here we are. You knew it wouldn't be too long after that. But hey, I got I to gotta play dad a little bit right now. Life is <laughs> life at, at the same time. But hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. It really, really helps us out. You get, Hopefully you got the notification uh, that we were live right here. So make sure you got those notifications turned on. And leave a comment. Let me know how big you think this commitment is for the Gators uh, and the Gators getting Aiden Mizell. Your support right here on YouTube really, really helps Gators Breakdown grow. Check us out at the home of Gators Breakdown, newsforjacks.com slash Gators Breakdown. And, of course, one more time, a reminder, go join Gators Breakdown Plus. I'm trying to throw a lot of you a bone here. Uh, If you don't have Florida, Utah tickets or you know somebody who wants a pair, uh, all you got to do is join Gators Breakdown Plus. You have a chance to win those tickets right there. And you get to listen to uh, an exclusive chat interview with members. Uh, Derek Wingo knocked it out of the park a couple nights ago uh, on Gators Breakdown Plus. Really, really good insight into the team as fall camp starts next week. So, all right, let's get straight to it. While you guys are all here, Gator Nation, we got to commit. And it is wide receiver Aiden Mazzell. He is a four-star on the 24-7 Sports Composite. He is a four-star on the own three consensus. And here you go, looking at the rankings, if you're looking at on YouTube, or I'm about to tell you right here why this is such a big commitment for the Gators. He is the 72nd overall player in the country, the top first top 100 player in this class for the Gators, the 13th ranked wide receiver on the 24-7 sports composite. Let's move to own three, where he is the 93rd ranked overall player and the 15th ranked wide receiver overall so there you go just pure numbers pure rankings you can see why this one is a big big get 
for the Gators. Looking at him, 6'2", 180 pounds from Orlando, Boone High School. So one more in-state player, an elite in-state player, one of the top in the state of Florida right here. And think about it, guys. This is Napier's highest-ranked offensive recruit in the two classes so far. Go back to last cycle, Kamari Wilson was the highest ranked player in the class. I believe he was 44th overall, if, I'm, if I remember right. Let's fast forward to this class. And currently, right now, right after Aiden Mazel commits, that makes him the highest ranked commit in this class, of course, but also Billy Napier's highest ranked offensive recruit so far. So diving a little bit deeper, According to the 24-7 sports all-time commit list for the Gators, Mazel would be the 16th highest wide receiver ever signed since their time tracking this. And that goes back to our early 2000s, of course. With a rating of 96.58, he would replace Jacob Copeland in that spot for the 16th highest wide receiver. The most recent wide receiver commit that is higher than Mazel is Xavier Henderson in the class of 2020. He is the 13th ranked wide receiver. Florida has ever signed. So there we go. It lets you know just a bit how big this commitment is for the Gators. We know Florida needs speed at the wide receiver position. This is what they are getting first and foremost with Aiden Mazzell. He is a complete package to me. I think that's why you see it reflected in the rankings here, but he is a burner first at the wide receiver position. As far as burners go, he might be one of the best, if not the best, as far as that mold goes. But he is an overall, he's a great overall receiver. I'm just, his speed is different. And we're going to get into that. Andrew Ivins offers this scouting report on 24 7 Sports. One of the fastest wide receivers in the class of 2023, given long speed. Size is unverified, but looks to be over six foot one and gifted with longer limbs. The son of former All-American sprinter who has also made a name for himself on the track, having gone as low as 10.65 in the 100-meter dash and 46.99 in the 400-meter dash. That's flying, folks. (laughs) Is quick to stem and stack defensive backs, agile enough to create separation as he works his way up the field, owns a surprisingly large owns a surprisingly large catch radius and has shown that he can win 50-50 balls in some situations. But ability to simply catch the football without breaking stride more times than not might be the most promising attribute. Could probably make a living just running go routes one day, but has shown that he can also produce chunk plays via quick bubble screens, at least at the prep level. Has been utilized primarily as a perimeter player on Friday nights and should continue to line up on the outside for the college of his choice given his size and ability to take the top off the defense. However, we'll eventually need to embrace the role of being a gritty blocker out on the edge if he wants to be more than just a complimentary piece on Saturday afternoons or nights. Should find most success in a modern pro-style attack that uses play action to take deep deep shots. NFL upside with his Jets. And that last line is probably nailing it on the head of why you commit to Billy Napier and Kerry Colbert. You look at Billy Napier's offense dating back to Louisiana. You guys know I do think it opens up a bit with AR, but I think the philosophy is still going to be the same. A modern pro-style attack uses play actions to get the receivers open. We know Billy Napier is still going to run the ball. I think he can open it up a bit with AR. You know, you don't have to be – I still think run first, but not necessarily run heavy. There's going to be plenty of run, and I think defenses are still going to have to game plan for that. That's why you have to get a receiver like Mazzell because if if that offense bleeds over from Louisiana as far as having success in the run game, then Mazzell is a dream for coaches at the receiver position to do what he can do on the field. Let's get a li- let's get a little bit more of that on three. Charles Power offers quote a lean receiver with high end play speed who excels after the catch both quick and fast, uses his burst to separate off the line, one of the nation's top sprinters in the 400 meters, 
which manifests on Friday nights by the way of a long stride in the open field, pulls away from defenders once he's at the second level, extremely slippery and shifty after the catch, ripping off big gains with regularity, quick as, quick in his initial movement after the catch, getting upfield with gusto. Has dangerous dead leg move that freezes defenders, also shows contact balance with the ball in his hands, wins at all levels of the field, at his best as a ball tracker when working on vertical routes, more of a tracker than a high point catcher at this juncture, can wait for the ball to come to him rather than attacking at his highest point, highly productive and efficient as a junior, accounting for over 1,000 yards and 18 touchdowns in just 47 catches. Has strong athletic bloodlines as his mother was an All-American sprinter at Florida. So there you go. That is a great look at the type of receiver. Florida is getting an Aiden Mazzell and taking those scouting reports right there. Now, I wish I could use them, and I probably could, but I'm trying to cover my bases. I don't want to get in trouble. I'd love to be showing huddle highlights right here, but I am going to, after after you watch this, after you watch right here on YouTube or listen on the podcast version, do yourself a favor. Go pull up these huddle highlights of Aiden Mazzell, and you can go ahead and get excited. <laughs> I'm telling you, uh, I am completely sold on this kid. I'm not, I'm not do I look at numbers and get excited about recruits off based off of that? Absolutely. That translates. But go watch the highlights and everything you see numbers wise and everything you just heard in those scouting reports, you're absolutely going to see on those highlights. I mean, right off the bat in these first few highlights, he's not just a deep ball receiver. He can take a 10-yard in route, make a move, and go 60 yards. He can take a screen pass, go 80 yards. He can catch a fade in the end zone from about 10 yards out, high point the ball, come down with it. And that may not be a strong suit, but he does show that capability. Does show great body control, catching the ball in stride, as it was mentioned there. Another highlight there, it comes off the line of scrimmage and immediately gets inside off of press coverage, takes it about 20 yards, another touchdown. If he's in the open field, you can forget about it. You ain't catching him. He's not getting caught. So, I mean, look at it right now. Aiden Mazzell, add him to the class, add him to the wide receiver class with Eugene Wilson, who is known as another burner, another speed option at the wide receiver position. And look, he's the second highest commit of the class right now. So if you look at the class, the top two commits in the class right now are two wide receivers who are known for their speed. And we've known dating back to you know at the end of last year and kind of looking at last year's team that maybe these wide receivers have trouble creating separation. Now, if you go back and listen on Gadget Breakdown Plus, Derek Wingo does mention a couple of receivers. Ricky Pearsall being one, the new transfer, that you'll see some speed from him. You'll see some speed from Jamarcus Weston. But we now we need to – Pearsall, I, I think we will see it different. And, you know, we, we haven't seen, seen it from him. He was at Arizona State. He showed that capability. We need to see it in a Florida uniform. Somebody like Weston kind of been buried a little bit. That needs to translate to on the field. They're being recorded as some of the fastest players on the team. Now we need to see it on the field. But it looks like in coming years that will not be an issue. You get Mazzell, you get, you get Wilson, the two highest commits in the class right now. Add Creed Whittemore, who is a very athletic option. And Florida has certainly upgraded speed at the position already with those three commitments at wide receiver. And we'll see what the future holds for Tyree Patterson. Now, he's not known as a speedster either, but Florida may not be done at wide receiver coming up. I, I've brought up Andy Jean's name. South Florida wide receiver, last couple of, epi of episodes. He's going to be on campus. Look out what happens there. And then there have been some crystal ball flips for Patterson to UCF. Probably in the plans a bit. If you get Mazelle, Eugene Wilson, Creed Whittemore, Andy Jean on the way maybe. And I'm not saying that's going to happen, but that's a, I'm saying it's a possibility. It might be the reason why. We are starting to hear Patterson's name float out there to flip into somewhere else. It's a big shout out also to Kerry Colbert, wide receiver coach. I mean, uh, 
wasn't too long ago. A lot of people were starting to wonder what's going to happen. At, 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 you know, and that kind of bled over into some quarterback recruiting as well. You know, didn't Florida hadn't had a quarterback in the class, so what's going to happen at receiver as well? Now, even before the commitment of Stokes, I think we felt comfortable about Eugene Wilson. We felt comfortable about Aiden Mazel. But I think once you got him in the class, everything kind of started coming along a little bit. I do think it helped. I think those guys would be in the be in the class anyway. But it doesn't hurt going ahead and getting that quarterback in the class at the same time. So we have to see how numbers come up. I mean, that's only four with. I say only four with Mazel, Wilson, Whittemore. And if you add Andy Gene, I think there's probably room for one more. I don't think you go to six, but five, I, I, I'm fine with it. We need to see playmaking ability at the wide receiver position. Add numbers, add high numbers, add elite playmaking ability, add speed. That's what we're seeing right here. And a good foundation, if you look at the class right now, of skilled players. Marcus Stokes, as I mentioned already, quarterback, you got him in the fold, four-star right there. Trayon Webb at running back. And now add these receivers. So the offensive class, what was, what was it, a month ago? We're starting to wonder, okay, where's the offensive side of the recruits at? Where's that side of the ball? What, what, what's recruiting looking like right there? But once you got the Jacksonville area kids of Stokes and Webb, Wilson pops. Now you're starting to see some more come in the fold right here. So we're starting to see the, the offensive side of the ball start taking shape a little bit. Now, offensive line is, is the next. Uh, is the next. And I know that, that one hurts a little bit too. Uh, but right now, skill player-wise, Florida's filling it in pretty nicely. Some highly rated recruits, especially at the receiver position. So, moving forward, let's look at the class rank right now. This is going to be pretty fluid. All these camps for various universities and colleges out there right now. So, as, it, as I'm recording right here on Friday afternoon, this could change if another school in front of Florida or around Florida with these camps and all that stuff. This you know Today on Friday and the weekend, if they get commits, of course, it can change a little bit. But as of right now, Florida 14th in the country – with their 14th commitment. 14, the magic number right here. Mazel, the 14th commitment, bringing the Gators up to 14th in the 24-7 sports composite rankings. Another four-star to add to the mix. So if you listened, you know, to the previous episode, we got to keep up with who commits, you know, where it's coming from. Jakeem Jackson, was one more four-star to add to the mix at the quarterback position. But now you add another four-star to the mix. It gives the Gators 12 four-stars in the class right now and only two three-stars to make up the class. Still counting Tyree Patterson in there. You just go back to that storyline that I just brought up. But you see it. And look, if... If, you, if class average is your kind of thing, it's up over 91 right now, which is higher than Dan Mullen ever had in any of his classes. Did not break that 91 barrier. And the average would actually go up if Patterson decommitted. So take it for whatever that's worth. <laughs> uh, but that's just how it would how it would break out if that was the case. And then, of course, Jordan Castell, I mean – you can go read that kid's tweets now. He's pretty much committed already. He's excited about the Mazel commitment, talking back and forth with Trey on Webb, basically saying he's next. We know that's coming on Saturday. I mean, there's not a, a lot of for sure, absolute 100% things that you can count on in recruiting. We're going to get into that just a second, too. But Jordan Castell, that's about as close as you can get. So expect that one on Saturday, 10.30 a.m. on Saturday uh, is when Castell. So expect Florida to raise up in the rankings. As I said, Probably it definitely will rise in the rankings, but how much may depend on if some other schools get some commitments as well uh, on this Friday and uh, Saturday. 
So let's go back, look at the state of Florida one more time. That's another storyline we got to keep following right here. And it's the same ratio as it is for four stars to three stars. Florida's got 12 in-state pledges right now for the class. The other two, TJ Searcy, Aaron, Aaron Gates from the state of Georgia. So... I've, I've already saw it out. I, have, I forget who put it out there. I, I was tagging it on Twitter, but Blue Chip Billy. There we go. <laughs> I like that nickname uh, coming coming right there. Uh, but you can see it right here with the four stars and the in-state four stars. The floor is definitely being raised in the class. Now, I know we all worry about the ceiling a little bit, and that's absolutely can be brought up. But, man, let's enjoy what we got right now. So, okay, there we go. Aiden Mazel in the class, but let's take a couple notes right here. Or let me share a couple notes right here on this Friday afternoon before we sign off. Friday Night Lights tonight, by the way, so some storylines to follow along there. Um, so last episode in the Jakeem Jackson commitment episode, I told you guys, and I'm just, you guys, a lot of you guys know about this already, of course, but Ohio State commit, Dijon Johnson, Looking like, a, looking like a flip candidate to Florida, where well, it looks like as well Miami is making a push here as well. Johnson is in Gainesville today on Friday after spending some time in Gainesville on Tuesday with Corey Raymond. But there are some reports now that he will visit Miami on Saturday. So we'll see where that one goes. <laughs> uh, you felt really good uh, on Thursday. There was... No Miami talk. Miami did a good job of keeping it under wraps, uh, but it had come out from one of their mods on 24-7, uh, I think Gabby, I believe, uh, that Miami has kind of been in the mix as well, just a little more quiet about it. Um, so, no, look, don't get me wrong. I don't think the publicity of it should have any effect, uh, but we'll see. we'll see. We'll see what happens there. So certainly one to keep an eye on, top 100 cornerback Dijon Johnson, currently committed to Ohio State on flip alert. It's like Florida, Miami are the schools in the mix right there. So I know a lot of you are going to say, yep, we know how this has gone in the past. Well, that's why it's worth bringing up. So, and one more bit of positive news here. Top 70 defensive lineman Kelby Collins will be coming to Gainesville this weekend as well after not making his scheduled trips to Alabama this past week. So I wrote this one off. I'm not going to lie. At, through this process, I'm like, in-state kid at Alabama, had been trending Alabama for a bit. Georgia might be in the mix too, but but I, I saw this one as an Alabama-Florida battle, but I didn't give Florida much of a chance. But after asking around, and then I know, I believe it was Chad Simmons from On3 had put out a report too, but a couple of days ago I was hearing this one a little closer than I was led to believe. So I'll be fully – I'm fully ready to admit that one. I wrote this one off, but Kelby Collins, defensive lineman. Not saying Florida is going to be the pick, but Florida is definitely in this one, setting themselves up to be in this one a lot more than I give them credit for, for the state of Alabama recruit, Kelby Collins. So, man, I keep talking about now when these commits or these recruits, these uncommitted guys get on campus with kids that are popping them this weekend and kids that are already committed – can they get caught up into it? And Collins not visiting Alabama this past week definitely helps. Now you get him in Gainesville with a lot of good mojo and a lot of good feelings. Maybe it bleeds over and he's ready to make his pledge to the Gators. Would be a big storyline. Would be a big get right there. I mean, well, how many times have I shared that, you know, defensive line trenches graphic the last month or so and looking at the top targets that are out there for Florida I don't think I ever put Collins on there because, as I said, I didn't really think it could happen. I'd be pleasantly shocked and happy about that one. So keep an eye on that one you know, coming up. I don't, I'm not giving any dates or anything like that, but just saying keep an eye on you know, what you may hear coming out of the, uh, the weekend visit there for Kelby Collins. So, all right, let me – I'm going to go to the chat right here. Hopefully I haven't really been able to keep an eye on it. It's hard to do when I'm doing these episodes uh, by myself here. But, uh, um, of course, uh, you're starting to see it a whole lot uh, of some some opposing fan bases. Uh, I like to, to hop in here and, and troll for whatever reason. But uh, here we go. 
let me see. I'm trying to catch up, guys. So I know the end of these episodes. I'm trying to catch up with it. Let me go back to the beginning. There's a whole bunch of back and forth there. I probably don't really need to read through, do I? <laughs> um Here we go. Good, good one. Even though another opposing fan base here, 904 Hurricane. Congratulations, Gator Nation. Nice pickup. Uh, see, this young man was a huge impact. Now, if you guys get Cormani McLean, you'll be making a serious moves on both sides of the ball. Uh, and that is it. Uh, 904, thanks for the uh, pleasant comment there. Um, yeah, you got to get, I mean, like I said, you, you got big time receiver here. So now you go to the other side of the ball. Uh, in the one we've all been targeting, all been waiting on ever since pretty much Billy Napier took over when it was time to change the the page, turn the page from the 2022 transition class to now the bump class of 23, McLean was the number one target. That is, who knows the timeline with that one? It may, we'll have to show a lot of patience on that one. And Florida, Miami, Alabama, I mean, I think probably Florida, Alabama, but as we've seen, you can't count Miami out of anything <laughs> right now. But if I had to lean a certain way into two schools, I'd say Florida, Alabama. Um, but that's just where it stands right now, late July. Um, War Dad says for Mazelle, huge get AM, which his nickname is Early because of the initials AM. I don't know if you guys knew that, but there we go. Uh, reminds me of Percy Harvin. Only needs to make a subtle move to break off long runs. Yeah, and I know the, the Percy comparison comes up a lot for big time receivers. You know, they go to Florida or whatever. Uh, but yeah, I get what you're saying, Ward. Dan. I, I know you're not saying he's going to be Percy, but you're right. Uh, a similar move set, if you will. And I think that the, the, the uh, one of the analysis there that we got, you know, said that dead leg move, where like you said, it's pretty much one move. He's so fast, gets the defender out of position just enough to where he's going to outrun whatever angle that defender may, may, may react to. So definitely that kind of uh, skill set. Savo Fleming says, bring back those speed kills, no fly zone hashtags for our team. Absolutely. You know, we, we used, to, used to use those a lot, didn't we? Uh, but, yeah, Florida – should always have speed on the field. That should never be an issue. And even you can see, I mean, go back to, you know, Will Muschamp's conservative look of offense. And look, Dan Mullen, even when he, when he come in and you know, fix the offense a bit, you could start seeing with what the, with what Florida has on the roster right now, going back to kind of that Mississippi State style of the big bodied receivers that could be really good blockers but more possession type of receivers, not the big play receivers that we see um, Mazel and Wilson can provide. So now you're kind of having to swing the pendulum back the other way of going to go get speed and playmakers at the position of receiver. All right. Uh, John Harrington, as uh, yeah, I mentioned, who else might commit this weekend? That's what's – as I said, Jordan Castell um, will be Saturday, 1030 in the morning. Completely shocked if he's not committing to Florida. And as I said, probably just look out for cornerback Dijon Johnson. If he's going to flip from Ohio State, uh, we'll see if it's going to be Florida and now throw Miami into the mix. Um, I see where Roman brings up Will Norman. There's word that he may delay it a bit. Um, I think Florida may also kind of see what happens at defensive line. I mean, if you somebody like Kelby Collins who wants to come in and take make the move, you know, what, what do numbers look like there at, at defensive line? Uh, let's see. I'll go through a couple more. Let me take a swallow of a drink here. All right. 904. Yeah. Also makes the trash talking more fun as well. Man, we're getting plenty of that, aren't, aren't we? <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's brutal out there right now. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, bu, 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 bu. And 
Matthew Walker does bring up uh, we can still land Gene and Sorry. This class is getting more and more stacked, as you said. And by the time we get through this weekend, we will see where numbers are at for Florida. Sorry's an interesting name to bring up, as I mentioned earlier this week. They had the cryptic tweet of July 30th. Don't really know what that means, if he's going to make a decision or not. That would be Saturday as well. Uh, does that mean the decision's coming? Um, there's some question if he's going to play receiver, if he's going to play defense, coming as an athlete, maybe figure it out later. See where that one goes. See where that one goes. But that's definitely another one to look out for, uh, Dequavius Sori. Okay, and bu, 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 bu. and one more right here. Uh, Common Cross. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm sorry if I'm not. We can get McLean, and will we have a legit top ten class? Napier is a beast at recruiting. For me to feel right now, as we see here at the end of July. Now, who knows what this weekend can bring? I mean, as I said, it could be some complete surprises out there that I'm not even privy to maybe seeing coming on the horizon. I do think you have to get McLean to feel comfortable for a top 10 class. I find it difficult if he's not in the class that you, you might sneak at like 10. You might. But if he's not in the class, I see a top 10 finish difficult. If he's in, I think it's pretty for sure Florida has a top 10 class. And if you get some more surprises, you may be pushing for that 7-6 range. I do not see top five. I never saw top five. If Florida somehow ends up there, I'd be completely shocked. But that's where it kind of – I think you need McLean to feel comfortable for top ten. Without him, very much question the ability to do so. Oh, all right. There we go. There we go. I'll scroll to the bottom here, make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, yeah, Wicked, I'll go one more to that. Corey Raymond got to get Dijon and cancel going to Miami. Either way, you got to get it done. Whether you make, uh, And I know what you're saying because history, recent history has shown us if that trip to Miami happens or Miami gets involved late, then it doesn't really look all that good. I, I hope, as I'm recording this on Friday afternoon, I hope I'm coming sometime Friday night right here with an episode saying, all right, Florida shut it down for Dijon Johnson, and he flipped from Ohio State to Florida. I hope that's the case. If I'm not recording an episode here on Friday night, then if he makes that trip to Miami, then, okay, then uh, look, guys, we can admit what, what what's going on here. Uh, this is great news for what Mazzell's happening, but just that storyline in and of itself, you know, I do think that trip to Miami happens. Ooh, you know, you're – Worry probably starts setting in just a bit. So I don't, and I'm not going to sit here and panic right now with that. I hope coming here Friday night, there is an episode right there with that. If not, hopefully there's one Saturday that he's committing to Florida, whether that Miami trip happens or not. But that's just one to look out for, guys. So, all right, that would do it right here. Uh, I'm going to try and head to Gainesville uh, for Friday Night Lights. A lot going on right now. Uh, I'm going to try and make it down there, uh, but we'll see what happens. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Throwing you some episodes right here when these commits are flying in. Um, so just ask for a like. The views, the likes. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Hey, we're pushing for, what, 10,000? 10, 10,000 subscribes subscriptions before the season i think we're about 500 away so give me a good do me a favor there hit that subscribe button right here on youtube everybody thank you for hopping in for this episode big big pickup for the gators at the wide receiver position for four star wide receiver aiden mazell that'll do it for this episode of gators breakdown i'm your host david waters you can find me on twitter at gator dave underscore sec Guys and girls out there, thank you for listening to this episode of Gators Breakdown.